how was the uh, who was the first guest that you got that was like a guest guest we we're like wow i got a, i can't For, believe i got this guy uh first i, I got robert green which to me was very interesting robert green the 40 laws mm-hmm. of power 33 yeah. strategies of war i got him we sat down i'm like and then we ended up becoming friends it was very interesting talking to the guy and by the way politically he's he's very on a complete opposite side of where i am but we had great banter together and we had him on again a couple other times uh, that was probably the first one. Clint Hill was very interesting to me because this whole thing with JFK, I'm also very curious about what happened oh, with the JFK. assassination? Yeah. So yeah. I brought Clint Hill. I know you're big on that as well, yeah. wanting to find that. I brought Clint Hill. He was one of the first. Uh, he, there was four people in the room when they were uh, dealing with his brain. There was four of them that were in the room. He was one of the guys, one of two that held JFK's brain, Whoa. Jim Jenkins. And he stayed quiet for 50 years. Quiet guy, married to the same wife, didn't want to say anything. And the stories he said, those very interesting stories he said, uh, that was Jim Jenkins. And then I interviewed Clint Hill. Clint Hill was a Secret Service agent, the first guy that jumped on the car when, uh, 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 when, when, he called, when JFK got shot. And uh, he gave me his perspective. And, you know, that interview was fascinating with Clint Hill. Uh, and then it led to many other guys that we had. But, uh, it, it, you know, obviously, if there's interest, the audience will feel it. Just like probably when you do an interview, there's an interest. There's a part of it that's going to pull because of you, that you're interesting. But there's a part of it that's also going to pull if you're really interested in the topic that the individual is talking about. You know, I remember one time I had a conversation with uh, uh, a guy that was from space, you know, was a uh, uh, astronaut. And uh, what was his name? Scott Kelly. OK. And we had a conversation together. It was a. 35 minute interview. I was like, within 35 minutes, I'm like, yeah, I, I, I'm good. There's no more interest here for what's up for me because I'm not one that's fascinated by space at really? that time. I wasn't at that time. Okay. And then I had the, what's his name? Uh, Greer. Is it Greer? Am I saying the name correctly? Stephen Greer. Stephen Greer. The UFO which, guy. By the way, fascinating. Complete different way of a guy telling stories than Scott was telling a story. Then you do bodybuilding. Ronnie Coleman, you sit down and talk to Ronnie Coleman to oh, think Ronnie about Ronnie Coleman's amazing. Dude, it's just ridiculous. And you talk about Dorian Yates and some of these guys. Yeah. And then you talk to Yanomi Park and you see somebody that goes through, you know, what their life is. And I know you had a Ron, which yeah. was a fascinating interview. Uh, what a but crazy it's, it's, world. Yeah, same thing about level of curiosity of how, how it gets, how certain people make it to certain levels in life and what makes them tick. How did they come up with their idea? Even the mob with these interviews with mob, you know, accidentally. Michael yeah, Michael yeah. Franchese, when I did the interview the first time with him, and uh, we had no idea what was going to happen. And then the interview does very well. And then I call Sammy DeBo Gravano, and I say, hey, Sammy, you know, I just talked to Michael Francis. I know who the fuck you are. And I'm like, so <laughs> what do you think about the interview? What I think about the interview? Let me tell you what I thought about the interview. Def-! And then he just went off, went off two hours on a phone call. Furious that I even interviewed Michael. Really? Yeah, furious. I'm like, Sammy. You shouldn't have interviewed him? Yeah, he's like, anyway, so yeah, he didn't want me to interview him. So he's like, he's not at this, he's not at this. I said, Sammy, fair enough. Then how about you and I sit down and let me see your perspective? How about you and I dinner? I would never interview with nobody. Do you remember the last time I got interviewed was with Diane Sawyer? Do you know what happened in 1994? What makes you think I would interview with you? Anyways, so we ended cut up. Cut to. Yeah, cut to. <laughs> cut to, we. First time I met him, uh, we go to this building in Phoenix, and he says, meet me at this place. Give me address last minute. I go there, and we walk into this building, keep going. Walk into the building, keep going. Room's getting darker. At this point, we're like, some shit's about to go down. This is in my career. So I'm like, call my wife and tell her, babe, I love you. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) And then there he shows up. You know, there is uh, Sammy, and we had the conversation. Finally, he agreed to to do the interview, and then now Michael and Sammy, Rudy Giuliani and Chaz Palminteri are doing the, what do you call it, the, the... narrating and that's now the sit down between the two that's coming up the mob world is interesting you know how they do what they do their world you know what values they live by you know yeah. what happened to it it's an interesting world you very know? everybody very has a different thing that they're in. that's fascinating to me so you know and then accidentally different topics show up you know that you, iran became very interesting to me because of the life i lived and what happened with jimmy carter after he did the toast on december 31st of 77 he leaves 12 months later, Kissinger says, don't worry, Shaw, we have your back. And the greatest revolution of all time without the main four criteria that cause a revolution happens in Iran. And then the Shah is kicked out, exiled after he changed all the things with Iran. Yes, he had Savak. Yes, he didn't do everything right. But then that takes place. And you wonder why, why that happened. And then you realize 
1954, the guy signed a 25-year deal with Germany, with the UK, with US, and I think it's Italy or France on an oil deal that these guys had a meeting in 77 to figure out a way to get rid of him because he knew the oil prices were going to go up, if Shaw was going to be there. All of these interesting things, you know, it's like you're digging in because it's part of it is your history, you know, part of it is my history, and I'm curious to know what happened there. But uh, that's this world, and if other people find interest in what you're interested in, then you're lucky because yeah. you find the audience that's interested in the same things you're interested well, in. Well, I'm interested in things that people are passionate about. Like if someone's just into making tables and the way they talk about making tables, if I can listen, <clears throat> if I can listen to someone talk about anything, rolling cigars, whatever the fuck it is that you're interested in, when someone has a passion for something, it resonates with you and the way you think about the things you're passionate about. People are fascinating. And I think the more people you talk to, I agree. The broader your understanding of yourself is, because you get a chance to see, you know, th these d different human beings and the way they interface with reality. It's uh. It's